Hey, internets, it's Jake from Mini Terrain Domain, and this is Sky Metal Iron Gods. This is a special episode, Interlude 1, implying perhaps more interludes in the future. Varus and Yosimagor Scrap Wall. Um, as you can see, we are down uh, two players. Karen and Sarah could not be here tonight, but we weren't going to let that stop us. Uh, so uh we're gonna be uh we're gonna be flashing back and learning a little bit more uh i guess in a way kind of a varus and and uh um yusimagor origin story if you will um but we'll find out more about that in a few moments when i turn it over to vi uh, super quick uh announcements boom up above me our domain relics uh we get those from you subscriptions resub gift a sub uh tipping five dollars cheering 500 bits uh kofi support all that stuff earns us domain relics that we can use um throughout the game uh for various benefits um <clears throat> and uh yeah that's what those are all about um we're adults playing uh in a fantasy game you might hear um you might hear adult language, graphic depictions of violence, um, and other things. If that is something you are not into, please do feel free to uh, go somewhere else uh, until you feel like you're in the right headspace for something like that or whatever you need to do to take care of yourself. Um, thank you, Why This Now, for, uh, for that immediate support through the bits. Uh, we do appreciate that. Uh, with the relics. Um, boom. Um, another quick announcement. Uh, know that we have safety tools in place. We've had session zeros. Um, uh, we have open communication between our players, our GM, and, and amongst everybody at the table so that we can all be safe. We encourage you to use session zeros and safety tools at your own games as they are extremely uh, important. Whether you're playing offline, online, uh, with friends you've had for 20, 30 years, or somebody you just met, it doesn't matter. Never assume uh, where somebody stands and always leave, have safety tools there as, as, as a safety net as well. Um, finally, uh, the last thing I want to mention because we always take time to talk about mental health, um, to let you know that you matter. Your presence on this earth makes a difference, whether you believe it or not, it's true. Um, the hardest part sometimes to, to getting the help you need is knowing where to start or where to find that help. All you gotta do is type exclamation point help, or periodically this message will appear in the side chat. Um, but in case you're uh, watching on the VOD, um, typing exclamation point help will bring up the URL findahelpline.com. Uh, we encourage you to check out that website, um, or you can check out the, uh, the resources at, uh, take this.org. Um, all fantastic resources for finding the help you need. We encourage you to check them out, bookmark it, save it for yourself, save it for a friend. And remember you matter. With that, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over in record time, I believe, uh, to our Game Master Vi. Thank you, Jake. We are going to start off not where we left off, not in the town of Torch, not hung over from a night of festivities, from relighting the Great Torch. Instead, we are rewinding the clock, rewinding to a year ago. Your Simagor, you have ripped apart the sky metal chassis that are these constructs below the earth. You've ripped and torn. You've rushed through the various subterranean places, a strange place you've never been before in this fit of rage. You've pushed aside Hellionite cultists, ripped them apart only to collapse at your knees when you finally made it to the surface. The surface here in Scrapwall. 
a scrap wall is a town along the Selen River that is built into this wreckage, a wreckage of sky metal artifacts uh, from an age long ago. It's been all dug out and pushed aside to form a town. But you do not know, or you do not notice much of the town and its hustling. For you, you pass out. Exhausted, injured from a thousand places, but free. Free from Hellion, deep below the earth. You awake sometime later in a place that you don't know where you are. Your vision is blurry. You see a rat folk towering above you. You're lying prone somewhere, somewhere soft. Your body aches, it hurts. You see this rat folk wearing some kind of smock or apron or something of that sort. Dealing with needles and scalpels and bandages tending to your wounds. You don't remember too much what happened next as you pass more into unconsciousness once more. The next time you awake, you have no idea how much time has passed. Consciousness comes to you. You're in that same bed. As you crane yourself up, you can see bandages upon your body, your muscles sore and aching. This dark room, it is like many of the places here in Scrap Wall, built into uh, the all the all the wreckage uh, that builds up the the stratas and structures of this of this town. It's a quiet one, but you can hear the sound of muffled voices, too dimmed and muffled for you to make sense of what they're saying um, on the other side of a door. But you've come too, uh, in this small like 10 by 10 room. You look to your left, you can see um, like a desk with a tray and on that tray are uh, rudimentary medical tools, um, bandages and a knife and some scissors and a few like ointments and even what remains to be a potion of healing down to its very last few drops. You've recovered from your injuries, but you're still a bit sore and, and beleaguered from it all. What do you do, Arsimogar, now that you've come to? <clears throat> Immediately... sitting up <clears throat> and taking uh, I think the in fact the very first thing that I would do is almost instinctively reach out and then finding empty air kind of sit up and look around where's my weapons I'm casting about the room about. looking for them yeah you glance about, looking, searching, scouring for them. They are not in this room. I will immediately uh, clamber out of the bed and uh, stand stand up almost in a... Not even almost. Absolutely in a ready-to-fight. Somebody's t got my weapons. Mm-hmm. That you don't As you stand up, your your legs are a bit weak, but otherwise they support your weight after you get a bent sense of your balance once more. You see that you're covered head to toe in bandages um, from a dozen battle wounds. Um, and almost comically, as you like stand up ready for battle, you're in some place where you don't know, the door opens um, as that same rat folk comes through, you know, back, you know, opening the door with her back. And she's she's like whistling a little tune, and she's like carrying a tray just to like uh, of another healing potion, um, and a few other things. And when she like looks up to see that you're not in your bed, 
and definitely very awake. She startles with a gasp, ah! um, almost clattering the potion onto the ground, and she sort of fiddles and tries to fumble and catch it, but she eventually catches it with her, her long rat tail um, before it smashes on the ground. Um, oh, you startled me. And then she, she yells back, Sephiroth, uh, he, he's awake. Um, before uh, kind of like stepping to the side um, to, to, to let you see what is beyond. Uh, she mumbles to you, I, this is for you, but it seems like you're doing quite fine as it is. Um, I wouldn't push yourself too hard, she says as she kind of wrings her hands a bit. Um, you get the sense that this rat folk is the one that was tending to you uh, all this time. Um, this face is familiar, but you do not know her name. As she moves to the side, you can see what seems to be like this in shadowed den almost it's um not very well lit it's just like candle lights and um lanterns on on tables um it seems like it's a place that's been repurposed um to be a bit more covert um than its intended use like it used to be probably you get a sense by looking at it maybe like a gambling den or something but like there's tables on top of the, the chairs are on top of the tables none, none of the equipment's pulled out um for like a gambling center the doors are closed and locked the windows are 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 closed with like these sheets and stuff to make it so that no one can look in or out um and you'll see um two figures uh standing over a table it almost looks like a, a war table um, the way that they're standing over it and the way that like, there's like a dagger in a map um, in the table. Um, the two figures are is a uh, tall, uh, blonde-haired, like short-cut, blonde-haired uh, human woman um, who her skin is like scarred and and well, well bronzed from uh, just worse. Uh, and the second figure is another rat folk um, who like seems to be half distracted by whatever this woman is saying to him um, while he has a little like insectoid creature scuttle um, across his like arm and shoulder and up his back or whatever. Um, I'm not sure if the Sumer has ever seen one of these things, but they have these long antennae um, and you can, maybe you, you would start to recognize what it is as it like starts to go for the dagger at the center of the table and mm. the little like whisk the little antennae begin filling out and it begins to corrode um before the woman yells out red tooth get, get a handle of that creature uh and she like tries to swat it away um off the table from from eating the dagger uh on the map she looks at you seeing that we're well, both hearing the the doctor uh, call for her and seeing your your very large presence standing on the other side of the door a smile reaches her face it is not a threatening smile but one you get the sense that she's been waiting for you to wake up do you do or say anything at this glancing between the <clears throat> the rat folk, the rust critter, and this woman, uh, probably starting with her, looking at the others, then looking back at her. Do you have my weapons? She smirks again, um, seeing that you are right exactly in the state that she wants you to be in. In due time, you'll have your weapons. I wanted to ask you something. Are you feeling well? I see you're standing. Well enough to fight. If That's need be. I like to hear. Listen. And she pulls up, she like leaves that war table, we'll call it, and goes to like another table um, and pulls out a chair and pulls out a chair for you to sit. Um, and she sits in her chair and gestures for you to sit in the other one. I will 
<laughs> I think I will go to the table. I will take the chair, but I spin it around so the back is facing her, and I do that sort of sitting uh, with my hands up on the back, but I'm also just loosely draping my hands so that if need be, I can quickly stand up and the chair becomes an improvised weapon. I, I feel like this is your Simigor's uh, early go-to of a, of a Riker uh, chair maneuver from Star Trek. Um, he, he definitely will sit facing and at the ready. I'm mm -hmm. listening. In up close now with the light of the candle that's on the table as she's lit with a, with a nearby candle, you can see her face in full. She has these tattoos that go down her cheek. Uh, piercings on her lip, on her nose, uh, these many multiple piercings on her ears. Um, she's definitely um, a one of, she definitely looks like she descends, or at least is part of one of the many Numerian uh, barbarian clans uh, that are in this region. Um, she leans in, you thirsty? What do you want? The stronger, the better. And um, she'll call out to Red Tooth. Um, get that thing out of here. Get get the both of us something strong, please. Uh, she says in a harsh tone, much harsher than the, the, the tone that I was able to put together. As something with alcohol um, in it, not that bitter bean water. Uh, she, uh, she smirks again at this. As I take a sip from my coffee. Yeah. And as um, we wait for Red Tooth to come, he begrudge for Red, Red Tooth to begrudgingly give us or give the two of you um, uh, the drink that you ask for. She begins to talk, uh, begins to present her case, so to speak. You or Simogor, we know about you. We know about your sister and how you defied her. You are trying to put a stop to Hellion. And so, so are we. You on, you on board so far? I'm still sitting here. Still I wanted listening. to ask your help. Mm -hmm. We could use a fighter like you here in this this petty excuse of a rebellion and she looks around at this basically empty den of of her red tooth this this like doctor rat folk and like a few other figures that, that are too like ensconced in in the in the dusk and, and shadows for you to really get a sense of who they are Sorry, you glitched out there for a minute for me. Oh, um, she, she's, she's, uh, I'll just, I'll repeat what I said. Um, she, we need your help. We need a fighter like you. Um, to join this rebellion of ours. And she kind of gestures around to a very empty den uh, of just the three piece people you've met so far and like a few other people that um, are like still hidden in shadows that you can't get a good sense of who they are. So you're just starting this rebellion. You always need to start somewhere. Red Tooth, he's he's got his own plans. And... Listen, you've got you've got an eye for this, it seems. Um, I'll show you this. Um, and she stands up from the table, uh, turning her back to you, and moving to the the war table at the center of the room. Do you follow her? Yeah. After a minute of watching her walk away and just kind of seeing what she's doing, I'll... My curiosity's getting the better of me. Um, 
I'm less defensive at this point and more curious. So yeah, mm -hmm. I'm right behind her or beside her, I should say. Yeah. So the three of you, um, have Red Tooth having given the two of you drinks uh, in these mugs, um, they're a bit dusty, but otherwise uh, decent mugs. Um, she gestures to this map on the table, and the map on the table is very similar to the map here in the Albert Rodeo. This is the map of Scrap Hall, and you can see that there's like written in scrawlings uh, all the various places in Scrap Hall, uh, and the dagger, the dagger is set right at the the core uh, on the map. Uh, this this what you would know is like the great mountain of of scrap that sits at the center at the heart of scrap wall um that there she gestures that is where hellion is and she gestures to the chapel of rust we heard of you breaking way through out of that place we we're hoping that you remember anything about it you've been inside But she she gestures to the to the to the doctor um, who's like technically tidying up the room that you're in, like like stripping the the whatever linens on off the bed and like whatever you know she's busy doing that. She said that you don't remember anything. Racking my brain, can I remember anything? You remember being you remember being led uh you remember, you remember having arrived down in some underground place you're not quite sure how you got there you remember being offered by by your sister join me brother you remember your refusal you remember the robots being set upon you you remember ripping apart them you remember ripping apart Hellionites in the chapel of rust and you remember tasting sunlight as you emerged um, in almost like a Shawshank Redemption kind of moment um, as you escaped the, the, the core the Hellion's lair. But these are all fragmented memories. You, it's hard to piece them together other than their chronological order. I imagine almost uh, the, the image that comes to mind in this memory is you know in a marvel movie right when it opens they do the whole you see multiple scenes of comic books images flashing before the marvel logo happens imagine that but all in a red wash and i think canonically this is how your simigor remembers what happened during a rage um i i, I think his memory he has a hard time remembering details uh, because he's uh, mechanically concentration is something you can't do while you're raging. So I, I think that's the, his deal is he'll, he remembers the blood if they're, you know, the blood or the, the machinery, the ripping, the tearing um, and the destruction and then the aftermath. And that's it. Um, but to, sure her, to, her, her, say, to her, to her, I will say, to her, I will say, I remember some things. What do you remember? She, she prompts. I'm sorry, the terrible music cue. <laughs> <laughs> what do you remember? <laughs> uh, that sounds like, that sounds like it should have been Barris's theme song. <laughs> um I remember the smell of the constructs. I remember the taint of Hellion's followers. That's all I need to know. If they are there. He's building an army down them. there? Like any desperate leader, he's amassing followers. Followers, yes. Constructs. Now that's that's something dire. 
that explains this then. And she takes her own like smaller like paring knife and gestures to uh, in between like the core and the dig site where it says receiver array on the map. She gestures to this part um, the behind and says something's being built here. I'm not sure what it is. The the chokers they're called at least we call them. Um, they live under scrap wall. They have their but they're coming out of their tunnels and building on something right on that hill there which means that means that that's a way in and a way out what they're building I don't know it's made of sky metal it's some artifact beyond my knowledge my reckoning but that's where you come in I want to put together a strike force, a small group. We can go in, slip in, slip out. Easy peasy. You, me, and we need someone small who can fit through those choker tunnels. Someone who has a good sense of sky metal stuff. I know a man. His name is Whiskafis. I fought with him 30 years ago. Here the scrap all rebellion he's a technomancer a rat folk he knows this better than any of us are you in you had me at task force strike team i mean and as as she's saying this um the juvenile rust monster will scuttle across the table again um and begin like nuzzling and almost like chewing at your finger uh, if you if you're like you know leaning against the table with your hands on it um it'll just like you know just nibble at your finger there's a subtle moment where as it's doing that you can see your Simigor sort of tense up his fingers like he's going to flick. And then instead he releases and uh, just kind of lets his hand lay out there and, and lets it uh, do whatever it's doing. Uh, mm -hmm. This small, like, cat sized bug creature, like, continues, like, nibbling at your hand and, and like, feeling up your, your, your hand and wrist, like, with its antennae, and it realizes you've got nothing metal on you and probably gets distracted by something else as it, uh, scuttles down the leg of the table and goes off to some corner of the den, who knows where. Um, but you say you're in, and the smile, another smile, goes across, uh, Sevros's face, this, Sevros being the woman. she come with me then and she uh she gestures for you and she leads you if you will um to a closet and this closet in this den uh has been repurposed into an armory and she looks back at you what do you have what, what do you have what sorry she'll say to you what will you have as she like gestures to like a great sword and like some like patchwork armor and some daggers and like a crossbow and like hatchets and stuff like that. I'd probably give her a look for a moment, like just kind of raising an eyebrow, like, are you serious? And as she gestures in <clears throat> without hesitation, I immediately walk in. I grab a, uh, a, a great sword off of uh, the rack, give it a little heft, grab the, you know, pull it out of the sheath a little bit, check it out, put it on my mm -hmm. back, walk over and grab a couple hatchets, tuck them into my belt, look around for a moment, find in the corner, I uh, imagine there's like a, a wooden barrel with the top off and it's just it's got spears and javelins, maybe a couple pike weapons, and just grab out four javelins uh, and 
kind of tucked him in uh, to like a javelin quiver and probably try to grab one or two more and try to like <laughs> guess four's enough turning around with now hatchets great sword and javelins this rebellion starting to form up nicely and she she comments on your choice of great sword she says good pick that one was my brother's take care of it What was your brother's name? Uh, Gorath, she says. He died true. Then, I will, mourning him. then I will honor Gorath's memory and blood. And with a nod, she grabs her own. She grabs a, um, a really hefty looking mace. Uh, off of a rack um, <clears throat> and grabs a shield uh, straps it to her back um, and she leads you out of this den she says looking for a whiskafus, a rat folk uh, he runs a shop now whiskers and wonders sub sub in Newtown And she'll lead you up some stairs, up a railway. Um, and once more, you will emerge to the sunlight that shines down upon Scrapwall. And you emerge in an alleyway you didn't know existed. Despite having been in Scrapwall quite a bit of your, time, of your time in life, this alleyway is decrepit and falling apart. And you can, part of the, 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 it's almost like a valley of this, like, scrap warrens. And some of them have, like, collapsed into each other, making you have to, like, kind of, like, duck. Um, this place is definitely uh, hidden and in, in out of, hidden in plain sight, almost. This, uh, this, this clandestine den. Do you say or do anything as she's leading you uh, out of this alleyway? I don't say anything, but... Um, I make note of the fact that I probably emerging from this building would have ex expected, uh, to immediately know where I was. So I'm a little perturbed that I don't quite know where I am right now. Um, but at this stage, uh, I'm, I, I probably look more at ease now that I'm armed. Um, and I'm just going to follow her. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, just keep my eye open, my eyes open, uh, as usual. And so she leads you out, um, out of this alleyway and into the hustling, bustling town of Scrapwall. And in the town of Scrapwall, it is not just humans that you bump shoulders with, uh, but rat folk, but ogres, orcs, even gargoyles, uh, even small little chokers, small little um, uh, creatures that have no, these are creatures that have no little, no bones in their bodies. Uh, they move like almost a fluidity. This one seems to be working as a courier um, with like a little basket on his back. He's like gliding off of buildings and off of the ground and swinging and brachiating. This is scrap wall, it seems, is a place that anyone can belong in. Um, it's a place for all types uh, to meet. You know that scrap wall was once uh, a rat folk uh, town, but they have let any sorts of people um, live among them, uh, opening their town to all sorts. She leads you through, up through Newtown, where you pass by all sorts of houses uh, and residences and even small shops um, built into this place. Till finally, you see this quaint little shop with a little sign, with a little, uh, with a little like rat folk holding, um, which seems to be like a, like a glowing gear. It's like painted on like a sign Ooh, with, a, with a little hand scrawled title. Whiskers and Wonders. Um, 
which is for here. I hope the uh, I hope the old man is up to the task. She says. Uh, she opens the door, and a little bell ding, ding, ding happens. Uh, she steps through, and inside, you'd be a bit cramped because you're a bit taller than uh, the intended uh, demographic of the store, that being the rat folk and other small creatures. Um, but you'll see uh, an old rat folk with long whiskers, uh, gray, and his skin is kind of mottled and, and graying in patches, and he hobbles up with a cane. <laughs> We have customers. Um, oh, hello. Oh, Sephiroth, is that you? Oh, it's been ages. Um, to what? To what, what are you doing here? He asks. And she says, I'm afraid we're not here to buy much of your stock. Um, do you have some place we can talk? She says. Whiskafer says, oh, of course, uh, upstairs. What brings you here? Uh, oh, yes, put on the kettle, we have guests. Uh, he yells up uh, upstairs to you, Varys. And he, Whiskafer, uh, will limp uh, with his cane up the stairs and up to the section of the shop that is like, reserved as a living space uh, rather than like a, a clientele. And you kind of have to bump past like shelves full of like trinkets and odds and ends and various like technological doodads um, that you think kind of serve no purpose probably, or at least you have no idea what they would do. Um, and you'll be uh, joined up in this, uh, up in the second story of this shop. And you'll see along with this old man rat folk, uh, a younger one, um, that being um, who you know to, who you have now learned to be Varys, um, who you imagine might be Whiskafis's son. Um, and he he pulls up the table, uh, the chairs at the table um, for all of you to take a seat. Sevroth does this, and so does so does Whiskafis. Um, And Sevros turns to you, uh, allowing you to say or do anything if you wish, um, before she'll begin talking to uh, Whiskafis. I imagine that, uh, your summer girl, when you come up the stairs, you see uh, a younger rat who looks who looks like Whiskafis, you know, much much younger. Uh, the the fur pattern I would imagine is is very similar, um, and Varys is wearing um, this long for him a uh, long coat um, that he has, and he is fiddling uh, around with all of these different glass containers and teapots and mugs and glasses. Um, as he looks quickly to you too and oh yes hello welcome to our to our shop Whiskafist will say to you Varys oh, they're not customers Sevroth an old friend of mine we fought back in that war remember I telling you about uh, yes yes uh, as he, like, you can see that Varys kind of goes over to his father and kind of uh, corrals him to sit down, kind of like, a, oh, yes, okay, please have a seat. And Lysifus will sit down and then, oh, that was when I was slinging magic as a powerful technomancer, so... Well, I can't conjure magic like that no more, not in this old age, but <laughs> I'm teaching you, aren't I? Uh, he looks at you, Varys. You'll be a good technomancer just like me. You see um, Varys's ears kind of lay back against his head. Um... And yes, of course, a, a great technomancer. Surely. Uh, 
as he kind of I'll like teach trails you. off. I'll teach you to 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 take over the minds of those technically robots and bend them to your will. I will. Uh, anyway, was so, so, Sevroth, what brings you here? I'm sorry for getting this, this sidetracked. Uh, Sevroth will look down, just like seeing an old friend. Um, she's almost like you can almost see like a little bit of like um, morbidity on her face. So she's realizing her old friend is not nearly as spry um, as she is. It seems like the rat folk have like a long, uh, a shorter like lifespan um, than humans do. Um, and she gives you a look, uh, uh, Shimagor. You're not quite sure what this look means. Um, and she says to Wiscafis, we come here, I come here asking for your help. We need someone small, agile, and has a knack for technological items, sky metal, and all that sort of stuff. Ah, uh, that would have been me if you had asked ten years ago, but it is not. And Sevrath looks to you, or Simagor, realizing this is kind of a dead end. You hear a very small voice. Oh, you'd almost miss it. Um, uh, I, I could go. As I turn to Severoth, I'm just. You're seeking the assistance of an old man, and kind of look around, look over at Varys. What I can only assume is a child in a toy store. Are you serious about this? <laughs> you see, you hear Varys. I don't know how old Varys is. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, the yeah. Timeline? yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I'll have whatever you know, it is, it's, it's, it's one year less than whatever you, whatever Varys is in the present. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, he's like, how long do, do rat folk live? I say about sixty years. Twenty six like years. Six, sixty. Yeah, I think six, I think sixty is like when they're like when they become really venerable uh, and old, um, and but maturity is still like twenty years old or so. Um, the, the, okay, so then yeah, yeah. Varys yeah. is like, I'll have you know, I'm twenty five years of age, and I have gone through the most prestigious schools and academia that this place has to offer. The, the irony is, is I gotta believe that your Simagor is probably like 25, 26 as well. It's oh, don't get me started on that, on that Brie Kite fellow. Oh, she has no idea what she's talking about. And, she, and he's referencing uh, one of your, uh, your mentor, um, a certain Brie Kite. You can see Varys just his tail just like twitches impatiently um, as this is a conversation that him and his father have had many many times and he doesn't want to get into it in front of the, the these people but he's like but uh, no I as you said yourself father I've I'm learning the ways of technomancy and uh, I I would be surely very very happy to to accompany you on on this journey and so whiskafis will like put his hand like on your up your on your upper arm he looks at you and goes uh, you know what my boy that's just a good idea um Zevroth, my my boy will join you what is it that you what you what is it that you're doing um he asks <laughs> and several will say we're looking to take down hellion <laughs> great Right? As, as uh, Varys looks towards uh, Whiskifus. And I think that there's like a a very large pause at the table of just the gravity of that sentence um, kind of sinks in. I don't think that anyone really knows how to, how to respond to saying something like that. 
um, and then whisk a fistful like scratch with his like little, little talon up in his up in his brow um, that's something dangerous I hope oh. and then Sabroth will will immediately like counter that with like an, a small strike team in and out no trouble we're looking to get reconnaissance nothing more at this stage Father, you've always said that I need to get my nose out of those books that I'm reading and get into the real world, and I I reckon that this is that moment. Are you sure, my boy? Oh, it's, don't, don't get caught. Do not get caught, he says to you. Pause. We are off air. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is going to take a moment, uh, for whatever reason, I'm trying to figure out why my OBS disconnects. I was gotcha. hoping it wouldn't be an issue tonight. Um, reconnecting in one, there we go. Reconnection successful. It will take a moment. It should continue the stream. Um, back All right, it looks like we are back continue whiskafist says you better not get caught then to you Varys. can you can you promise nothing bad will happen to my boy uh whiskafist says to to sevroth and you or Simagor, not realizing that the two of you had just met like you and sevroth had just met I look to Severoth. I'm not making any promises. Severoth lies through her teeth and says, no harm will come to your boy. You see, I am in, I'm in good hands. I have all the confidence in the world that, I mean... Just look at him, Varys um, points to Yersimagor. Surely, uh, you know, someone of this stature, and um, I see your, you know, I'm sure you have lots of uh, wicked weapons on you. Surely, um, no harm will come to me at all. Good. I'm not going to go out of my way to protect you. Expect you to hold your own. Varys like <laughs> pauses, like that is uh, the opposite of what he had just said. He's like, yeah, "Well, I'm sure we can figure out the the details in the meantime while we're on our way to do whatever this uh, reconnaissance mission is. Um, just, just you know, small things. I'm sure. I'm I'm quite looking forward to uh, to this." Adventure. Stavros looks to you, Ferris. Well, get your things then. And she looks to Whiskafis and says, We'll have your boy back by dusk. I mumble under my breath over at least his body. So, uh, I imagine that uh, you see Varys like having an, a, a bunch of different like bottles and he, he doesn't seem to be able to um, hold it all as he's like trying to um, collect all of the things that that he needs but is having some some difficulty with uh, collect like uh, being able to put all of these things away. I'm, I'm not quite sure where to, to put all of these things. All of these are, are very important, I assure you, for my um, various uh, abilities. That I assure you also uh, stretch way beyond the, you know, abilities of a, of a technomancer. I'm, I am much more capable uh, than that of just dealing with, with mere robots. I can, 
uh, also affect the, you know, the mind of the of the flesh as well. I, as he's like talking, as he's trying to get all of this, all of these bits and bobs and glassware uh, into this like small little um, burlap sack. As you're doing that and sort of mumbling to uh, Whiskifus, trying to convince him further, I just imagine since this is a toy shop, uh, there's probably different types of like boxes and chests and what have you that are displaying various objects. And watching you struggle, it, it's less of a, I want to help this little guy and more of a i want to get the show on the road uh i imagine your simigor looks around for a suitable uh wooden box and just upends it just dumps whatever was in it onto the floor and maybe even grabbing a couple parts and quickly just throws together like the the equivalent of straps uh and says here, put your stuff in this. Yeah, you see, um, Varys. Uh, oh, well, that is quite brilliant. I never really thought about that. Uh, using containers um, that are a little bit more sturdy will definitely be very helpful to the many pieces of glassware that I that I carry with me. Is he like? already like taking out um the stuff out of his burlap sack and putting it uh placing it into this uh little shelf that he has now you see we're already getting together so swimmingly this is quite wonderful i'm very much looking forward to to this little adventure of ours your semigor is already standing by the door waiting Fedroth waits with you. And finally, Varys, you'll collected all your things and you've kind of got them in your little backpack that you wear. That's like just like a, a cabinet of all your goodies. Um, and Sevroth gestures to Whiskafis. Um Whiskafis seems a bit still a bit concerned about this. Um, but he does not block or hinder your departure. And as you leave the shop following Queen Sevros. She begins to brief you on essentially all the things that he that she briefed um Simagor about about the about the chokers that are building something uh, behind Hellion's core, that implying that there's an egress in and out of his lair uh, back there, one that can be used perhaps um subtly. And then she says, that's where your job comes in. You tell us what it is we're building, we'll get you there. And when we go delving in those tunnels, well, you're going to be the ones that can squeeze your way into the tighter places. Let us know what you see. We'll watch your back. You got it? And with your, with your nod, she leads you through the town of Scrapwall. You make your way through the busy market squares, past uh, the great tall standing spires um, that were, at one point, used to be the domains of the various uh, clans of Scrapwall. Now they have dissolved and uh, in the years after the Scrapwall Rebellion. You make your way through the Warrens, um, the the entrance to the vast network of subterranean homes that a lot of the rat folk of Scrapwall live in. Until finally you reach where you can see up ahead the dig site. The dig site itself is this massive excavation in the earth where a bunch of laborers um, under the heel of Hellionite uh, taskmasters are working their way shovel and and, and pickaxe, excavating both the earth and the sky metal scrap that builds up this great mountain uh, of, of that is the core. She gestures and points up, and you can see um, 
at a place just a little bit back away from the dig site. Um, I'll move the little token to like about here. Um, she points upwards, and atop the little a little bit of a cliff, um, in like the scrap itself, you can see that there's like poking up from this angle, some a tower that's being made out of scrap wall. Oh, it's not scrap wall. Scrap uh, sky metal. Excuse me. Oh, scrap sky metal. Um, it's being fastened together, and is right now currently in like ha it's, it's it's like incomplete still. It's like definitely not fully made, but you can't really get a sense of what it is or even its scale from this distance. That right there, Sebrath says. That's what we're looking for. She looks to the two of you. You ready? Sorry, what are we exactly looking to find? That's your job. All right, we're going to take you there. We're going to watch your back. You're going to tell us what it is he's building there. Ah. We're going to investigate those tunnels that the chokers come in and out of to build that thing. Right. See as far right. as they can go, and if they if they are a direct tunnel to Hellion's lair himself, so I I theorize that it is. These chokers, they are not. They've never built such things before in the many generations they've lived here, but. They lair underneath Heldian's core. Surely this is for him, some monument they're building for him, at the very least, under his command. Now they're see. getting orders from him. They must have access to him. So figure out what he's building and how he's building it. <laughs> and if there's a secret way to get right at the heart of his lair, past all of his forces, or is completely fortified with all the Hellionite uh, warriors and the Lords of Rust themselves. And your sister, she looks at you, your Simagor. But here, if we can find a small entrance that perhaps even he doesn't even know about, that could be the way we tip this in our favor. But we're not going into the lair, correct? We're, we're just looking. See as far as it goes. Right. Got it. And if it does. Right, but not If it's a dead end, we turn back. Right. We do not want to confront Hellion. Not yet. This is just a small team. Just the three of us. We don't have the numbers. We're not bringing the numbers with us to do this. This is a reconnaissance mission. Do you understand that? She says not to you, Varys, but to you, Ursimagor. I think that Varys answers, even though it is absolutely not aimed at, at Varys. Oh, and yes, of course, this is my first time, so you're the boss. I don't respond to her. Um... I just stand there with my arms crossed, waiting. She takes, she takes that as the closest thing to a positive that she's probably going to get from you. Uh, she's still trying to still trying to suss out how to interact with you because this is your first meeting with her. Um, she shrugs, kind of gets up ready to go uh, after leaning from leaning against this wall and takes you up this precarious path um, up the scrap itself up onto this hill. Um, she clings kind of to the side of the wall so that it's not too, she's not in super open visibility. Um, and she gestures for you to follow suit. Up here, you have a better vantage point of the entirety of this section of scrap wall, even the east entrance uh, far to the east. And you see up ahead, perhaps a hundred feet away across a very, rickety, weathered, um, precarious-looking bridge that spans uh, from this heap uh, to the next where that monolith is being built. You can see it, uh, the monolith itself. It's You will recognize Varys. This is not just like a bunch of scrap that's been like kind of piled up and welded 
to make some kind of like monolithic totemic tower or something. It seems to be following some kind of schematic where only like certain parts are being put in and a lot of a lot of like care and dignity. Uh, it almost looks like it's reassembled like the, the chokers are reassembling some ancient uh, 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 the contraption or or construction it's some ancient construction from uh, the sky metal ancients themselves it is slender uh, with a wide base um, but stretches high and high to the sky it is definitely incomplete you can see as you kind of hug this wall that there are still many chokers that uh, scuttle to and fro, carrying like parts of of sky metal, um, these like bits, and like kind of putting them in a heap. And another one is like with these large claws, kind of like looking at it and like swinging and breaking it around and like put, putting it on and twist it into place. And, um, these chokers themselves, they are smaller, slightly a little bit smaller than you, Varus. Um, they are almost like a slimy the way that like a snail or a slug is in terms of like skin texture. Um, and their hands are like these massive, like um, radially symmetric, they almost look like squid tentacles, but as hands. Uh, and the same thing as their feet. You, they all often exchange hands and feet, like they're just like the four of them. Um, the way that they like brachiate and move about. Um, they move in like a very fluid fashion because uh, they have no bones in their body. Um, and they have like small little skulls uh, with a bunch of jagged teeth uh, and little beaks um, as they kind of move about and scurry about. Um, they have not noticed it yet. So I guess Varys wants to try and see if um, there's any kind of also, um, I don't see my uh, token. Oh, I mean, okay, yes, yes, you're, you're so right. Let me put you down. Thank you. Um, this is still in the over overworld map, but yeah. Here you are. Holy oh. crap! Versus you. Huge. Huge. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Varus. Yay. There you go. Okay. And for posterity measure, I'll put her in too. Cool. The three of you are at the receiver array. Right. So I guess Varys just wants to start investigating the area just to see like what kind of potential entrances there are, like where there are chinks in like, you know, mm -hmm. what is being built. I guess okay. is like he's just trying to f see if there's like a pattern or something that they can um, exploit later on potentially. In 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 the in the construction itself of this like thing they're building, yeah. or in like where they're coming from. Uh, in what they're building. Okay, yeah. Give me an investigation, or even like, um, I get honestly Arcana. Uh, if you've got Arcana, uh, mm -hmm. this will apply as well, because oh. the domain of sky metal is the domain of the arcane in this world. Uh, seven. You don't know what they're building, but you do know that they're building it with high precision, as I described earlier. There's a lot of... They're following some schematic for something. They're building something in particular. Um, it is, they're not haphazardly putting it together. You have no idea what it could be. Um, you do know that it's unfinished, and you look up at your two brawny companions, um, that of the barbarian woman and that of the barbarian orc, um, you imagine they could probably, if they teamed up, probably just, like, destroy it. Like, just knock it over and have it plummet down the side of the cliff. Um, hmm. It doesn't seem too big. So, sorry, where are we trying to get into? We're trying to get into the tower, right? Yeah, so um, you right now are at, like, the backside of the core, which is a giant mountain. Uh, of scrap and dirt and whatever uh, mm -hmm. that is it's known to be Hellion's lair you know uh, she's told you that Hellion lairs somewhere within the core uh, mm -hmm. and the, the big the main entrance that people know about is up in the arena up into the northwest um, mm -hmm. but it's heavily fortified 
uh, by Hellion, Hellionites uh, and uh, even the Lords of Rust themselves. Um, there's also a large like um, Hellionite presence up here in the dig site, trying to excavate the core itself too, um, trying to shrink the core by digging it out. Um, and you're hoping, as Sevros said, you're hoping that there's a secret entrance into the core um, up here in this back section because you can you can see clearly that the these choker creatures they are ambulating in and out from somewhere. Um, you can't quite get a good perspective, a good like view from this perspective, where they're but they're definitely like, coming in and out uh, of like the cave of, of of the of the cliff wall onto does, this plateau. Yeah. Does Varus know is like if he tries to touch one of these creatures, do they like he's he's not going to, but like does he know? how they respond so you i yeah as a as couple like native you know that like there's kind of an uneasy relationship between the chokers beneath scrap wall and the rat folk that live in and all the other people like it's like an uneasy but like live and let live kind of scenario they haven't really integrated themselves much unlike the uh, like the, the various barbarian tribes or the orc tribes or even the ogre tribes and gargoyle tribes and Rat folk themselves have all like integrated really well in the mishmash, but these chokers they seem content to live in their own section of scrap wall. And every now and then they might trade, mostly for food. Um, but it's you you've probably been taught to kind of just like stare away from them. You're not even sure if they, if you can share a language with them. Um, but they're definitely intelligent, but. Uh, okay. Yeah. They just okay. keep themselves. They just keep themselves. Okay. So he wants to look at one of these like chokers and see if he can track it for a bit, just to see where it's maybe coming in from, in and out of. Yeah. So this would kind of like, this would just involve simply just would, would involve like breaking your cover, um, and like getting out into the open to like, see where they're going. Is that okay with you? Uh, to step out from behind cover to do this. Does he have to step out all the way? Can he? Yeah, you'll have to be like, you have to be basically in the open to see, because it's like, um, it's like a. I'll just do a little draw tool here. Uh, like, if you're coming up, like, oh, that's not draw. That's a circle. It like goes in. Mm. Um. So if 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 like you're here, this is where the tower is. And they're like coming in and out of some place. So you have to like step out to see if that makes okay. sense yeah can you see any other like entrances or with, like not from this vantage not from okay this so vantage, then no. he will have to step out yeah yeah okay he's gonna do so then okay uh i would like you to make two rolls please a stealth okay. roll and a okay. perception roll all right stealth is to see if you get caught uh stepping out of cover and perception to see is what what can you see in that glimpse you like peek out and peek back in uh what you're able to get in time oh my goodness i am rolling not well three for my all right as you step out yeah go ahead uh, what do you go for perception then, oh my god 10. okay um that's the, the, the 10 was good enough uh the three was a fail uh, as you step out all of a sudden the th three there's three of these chokers one of them that's hanging on to the uh the construction and the two of them that are like ambulating to and from like carrying in and away the, the parts for it, um, they pause. All of them just like stop moving. Um, one of well, one of them like kind of like makes a gesture and like a little like tap 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 against something, and they all three of them look and see you. Kids are kind of just like, what's someone here doing? Kind of like they all just pause, um, waiting for you to make a move. Uh, but in this moment that you're able to like, when you're being seen, you can see that there is a small tunnel that they are coming out of. The small tunnel would maybe, like, would fit you easily uh, because you're the, about the size of these creatures. But Ursimagor and Sevrath would have a harder time, but maybe it's possible for them to, like, kind of like, mm -hmm. into this tunnel. And that is where they're coming in and out of. But you've been spotted. Uh, and they're, they're, so far, they don't do anything hostile, but they, they you know that they know that you're there. Uh, but they only know that you're there. They don't know about Jacinda and Sebrath yet. 
can Varys pretend to like be looking around for something like within the give scrap? A, give me a like give me rummage. a deception roll then. Yeah, give me a deception to pretend to just be uh, a scrapper. Yeah. Yeah, just kind of a yeah a scrapper. Yep, yep. Please, please. Uh, nineteen. Yeah, uh, this is convincing to them. Like you just like kind of whistle and kind of like rummage about and they pause. They see that you're not interested in what they're doing, so they continue. Um, yeah. And they, they chitter yeah. to each other um, in Undercommon, and which I don't know if you know Undercommon or not. I have Comprehend Languages. Okay. Can I cast you that? Wanna... Yeah, you can definitely cast it. Um, you... Yeah, so use. I'm going to do it as a ritual, which takes You can spend a spell slot to cast it for sure. All right, that takes 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you'll, like, I guess, step back and wait and cast a spell for 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, um, I think that Sevroth will probably pester you while you're going through this ritual of, like, what did you see? Um, and you're like, hold up, you know, I gotta cast a ritual. Um, and she's in, she's patient, but her patience is wearing thin. Um, or Simigor, is there anything that you want to do uh, as this has all happened? Mm. And, Sim and Varys is getting ready to prepare a ritual. I I don't know that there's much I can do um, other than just keep an eye out. Um, I feel like I feel like well, you know, Simigor has no hope of ever understanding magic um, and the ways in which uh those that use magic manipulate it um shamans are very highly regarded in uh in the orc tribes in the barbarian tribes um so despite having said i'm not going to protect you i think when vera starts performing this ritual recognizing that magic is happening um immediately uh given the high ground that we're in uh just kind of carefully pull a javelin out and have it sort of at the ready perfect um your ritual goes undisturbed for the 10 minutes ferris um and when the comprehend language sets in effect you can though the word the muddled mumbles that these chokers um that they that they speak uh, turn into actual words this one this one uh, where does it go up here hmm. red ghost said so um in these like scattered little bits of, of fragmented language um that's one no good no good you see that like this particular one that's like hanging on to the tower itself seems to be somewhat coordinating the other helpers um who are just like bringing him stuff to do uh, you've also gotten a sense that this main one that's latched onto the contraption his name is grick uh you've you've learned um but many many mentions of red ghost said so um uh, and kind of like waiting is like oh i need a different piece um and then like oh that's a good one and we'll like scurry up and like put it up on the top uh for example and, and such and such um seems like there's some kind of coordination and, and grick seems to know a bit about um what's going on here okay yeah so um Varys is going to relate all of this information with um attention to the fact that um this one is named Grig that is going to be of particular importance to uh Varys uh, and he's going to relay that that information but also about the red ghost and um of also about what he saw when he looked around the corner and said ross looks down to you ferris is there any way we can get past them where are they coming from We could create some type of distraction, perhaps, that would uh, 
divert their attention away and go in through the space that they came out of, though I cannot guarantee that there won't be more of those things inside the passageway once we go in there. If that's, if that's their hive, then I might be full of them. Yes. But so it looks, looks like... to you, Osimagor, any ideas? We need a distraction. What if we knock that thing down? You said the a red ghost is instructing them to build it? Maybe red ghost is Hellion. If he wants it built, we want it gone. That's, that's fair to me. Wouldn't that not make them angry? They are skittish, weak creatures. I'm sure they'll understand the power of Ursimagor's might. I don't imagine they'll give us trouble. Though we shy away from conflict in the past, even when Scrapwall rebelled against the Technically, they cowered in their caves. You see, Varys doesn't look quite convinced, as they are the same size as he is, but... He nods. So now the question is, how do we get over there? Yeah, there is a a bridge, uh, a rickety oh, yes. bridge that crosses the gap. Uh, it is about a 50 foot fall if you were to somehow plummet from that bridge. It's a 50 foot fall. Um, but the bridge stretches about uh, 25 feet over to the outcropping that is very sturdy that the that the their that their construction and entrance to their cave uh, is on the other side of the bridge. I would like to. The bridge seems the most direct route. Um, I would like to. I would like to see either myself or with Varys' help to dis see if we can discern a pattern to their movements. Like, is there a point where there's a lull in them? A point where it would be mm -hmm. good to cross the bridge uh, relatively unnoticed. Yeah, this will be an insight uh, or perception role for you. Um, and if, if Varys wants to help you with this, um, well, we can have whoever has the higher bonus roll with advantage. The insight or what? Or perception. Well, I'm dealing a plus, with a plus one on both. I have a plus three to perception. I imagine sort of uh, basically telling you what I'm looking for, Varys, and then this big orc just kind of crouching down one hand gently on the top of this this uh box that your uh your pack and just if this were a piece of art it would be you kind of squinting and looking and your simigor kind of crouched next and kind of pointing mm -hmm. um as yeah you make the check uh, yeah, so with advantage, uh, it's a 23. Yeah, perfect. So you're able to get a sense of the pattern of the movement. Um, there is, There are times when the two ambulating chokers uh, are both absent. They're both like in the cave somewhere. But the third one, Grick, never seems to leave um, the tower. When there is a lull, though, he will be like slumped like at the base of the tower, like kind of hovered up and like definitely like taking a moment to catch a break whenever you can um waiting for like one of the uh one of the other chokers one of his other brothers to um arrive um so there's there is a point at which you could catch him off guard um uh like this uh where he's like sitting up not really expecting anything because he's dismissed you as a scrapper um and with the two chokers already inside
And you'll definitely be able to capitalize on a moment like that, if you so wish. Mm-hmm. No, should we? Should we go? Should we do it? Then? You can see Ferris is getting a little excited. It's like a plan. Better. The sooner the better. Whenever you think it's best. Yeah, so, yeah, Varys is going to... He'll call out when um, when this kind of lull happens and there's only one out. Well, perfect. A few moments pass, and this moment happens. The two of them leave, and Grick uh, puts his back to you and slumps up in a in a in a resting position. Which is, you you look at the resting position of this of this choker, and it's like like wrapped up in like even more of a fetal position than the fetal position is. It's like just like turns into like a little bit of a an orb of like wrapping these like very cartilaginous rim, limbs around himself. Um, and this is your moment to act. And you are you like racing your way across the bridge? Um, yeah, we're just going to be, I guess, purposeful. I mean, mm-hmm. Varys is going to approach with all the confidence of a brand new adventurer for the first time. And I will follow Varys knowing that if I need to, I can hurl a javelin over his head uh, so he's not really in my way. Perfect. To make it across this bridge, um, it's a bit more precarious than you thought it was in terms of footing. I need to both to make an athletics or acrobatics roll. Uh, to make it across this bridge. I got a 13. Okay. Yeah. I got an 11 athletics. Both of those are passes, as the footing is very unsure, but uh, as you're able to, like, it, it, as you immediately as you step onto the bridge, it sways and wobbles uh, with the weight of you. Um, it's definitely intended for very small creatures, uh, even lighter creatures than you, uh, Varys. And with your acrobatics and athletics, you're able to make your way across. Um, but doing so, the Grick will turn around and go, um, and which is in, in Undercommon will be, what are you doing? The stop, don't step any closer. In broken, in broken common that you can't understand. No, stop! Do not come! He says to you, holding up like these, like weird, like suction cuppy hands um, to 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 try to get you to stop. I have, but you've made your way across the bridge. I have no intention of stopping. If we're gonna make a diversion, this thing's right here now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the you're structure. within within grabbing range. This tall tower up close it's like about like 10 or 15 like about 10 feet tall um the sky metal tower i am going to not even pay him any mind and i'm going to walk right up to this thing and as i close the last few feet to this tower i'm going to increase my speed and just shoulder tackle it mm-hmm. um Sevroth will join you which means that you can make this athletics roll with advantage. All right. I'm putting my trust in the one of the dice is the one that Carrie gave me in honor of Tira, her barbarian. So there's a little barbarian uh, inspiration here. And that's the higher of the two dice, making my athletics check a dirty 20. Perfect. With a shoulder heave that is soon followed up by... Sevroth, as well, with her brawn, you topple the sky metal contraption off of its bearings. It was, like, kind of um, raced into the ground by, you know, like, uh, these poles and stuff like that, and rocks and stuff. Uh, be able to topple it, and it goes crashing end over end down the cliffside, and Grick literally kind of comically with these big, like, cartilaginous arms. No! What are you doing? Um, <laughs> as you can easily... Uh, begin scrambling down the cliffside. The red ghosts work! The red ghosts work! No, it is all undone! Uh, as he scrambles down to try to, like, collect it in, in the dust when it lands. Uh, as Grick uh, uh, ambles down the 
the cliffside. But in this moment, there is no one up here, and the entryway into the cavern is open. Um, what do you do? I think we head into the the cavern. Yeah, come on, yeah. we have we haven't much time. Yeah, perfect. Um, Varys, you're able to get in without a problem, um, but um, Simagor and Sevros, you'll need to like kind of squirm your way through. It's not gonna, I'm not gonna call for any rolls, but it's like a bit difficult for you to make your way through, but <laughs> you're able to do so. And I, I'm, but... I'm laughing because I was just about to say uh, green light, but claustrophobia is a, a thing, but I'm giving the green light. But I laughed because as I was about to say that, the uh, auto comment about safety tools and sets and zeros popped up um, at that exact moment. <laughs> you emerge into a a dank, tight, humid, musty uh, cavern system. Um, as you make your way through one after the other, you see that there is a bitterly dark uh, cavern here, tunnelly and labyrinthine, with these jagged cave walls and a stream that flows uh, from some unseen source and flows down uh, a waterfall, uh, about like five feet drop into a large pool uh, that kind of glitters in the ambient light of some of the fungi that grow on the walls and on the ceiling and on the banks of this pool. And with that, entering the choker tunnels, we'll go ahead and take a break. All right, we'll be back in just a few moments. And, and we're back. we are here in the caves as Varys, you take the lead, well, not take the lead, but you've gone through first and step out in Simugor. You have made your way through this is what you see uh, here below the earth um, and below, th below the, the mound of Hellion's core, so to speak. Um, the water that flows through um, through this like snaking cave-like structure and an opening uh, both up here um, and the waterfall that descends down into a, a gossamer pool. Varys, you've been here for a bit more time than the others, um, so you've glanced around. Uh, and you see that, like right here, at the uh, at near the top of the waterfall, it's like this really large mollusk shell, like a like a nautiloid shell, like a like like a snail shell, I guess is a better way to phrase it. That's like you could fit in that um, kind of sized, um, and it's kind of just like discarded. Um, and you can see probably why it's been discarded by whatever creature lived in it is that there's a a pretty large hole, a crack in a hole inside of it where something blunt has destroyed it, but... Yeah, so Varys is going to just kind of creep forward. Mm -hmm. You slosh away through the water. It's like, maybe like shin deep at, at the deepest for you, Varys. Um, as you slosh your way through, forward through the through the river, uh, this like little creek, I should say, um, you can see up to the north here, uh, this like little alcove is filled with like bones and and refuse uh scattered um the bones of animals and even you can see even sell some like some humanoid skulls um that might belong that belong to like rat folk and humans and other things like that um amongst the bones here it definitely seems like some kind of uh uh heap where people where the chokers are disposing of things mm. uh, up here um, but as you get a sense of uh, up here at the top of this little, small little waterfall, you can see that this cavern definitely opens up um, farther than even your dark vision lets you see. Yeah, so he's Enjoy. going to continue to move forward so that he is right by the shell, if possible. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, you can make your way to the shell and it's there in front of you. You're just following along. Yep. Along with Varys? Yeah, perfect. And Sevroth will follow as well. And she has her mace uh, and her shield uh, drawn. Uh, she's ready to go if any kind of 
danger happens upon all of you. I've done. Uh, this, I've, here. I've pulled my sword. Uh, upon mm-hmm. entering the tunnels, I would have uh, put my javelin away and pulled my sword. Mm, perfect. Um, is this like a cliff, or can um, we walk? So this 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 entire area here is raised. Like the pool itself is like five feet drop, um, and only only this area here is below where you're at. So this is this is the five foot drop depression. So this is all a cliff that's like walkable. Okay, so he's that gonna makes sense. Yeah, yeah, Varys is gonna start going this way. Yeah, and he's like, uh, I imagine Varys like is constantly like looking back at uh, Severoth and Rasimagor, just like. Am I doing okay? Is is this right? Like, yep. but also trying um, to nonchalantly seem like he knows what he's doing. Yeah, so Roth is like urging you to continue exploring, um, even though the area is like not as like cramped as she imagined it would be. Um, but she would actually gesture down these tunnels down here to the south, like noticing that they're much thinner and that both Sevroth and Asimor would have a harder time squeezing through them. To maybe have you check them out. Um, Okay. She she doesn't want to speak um, in this kind of area, but she's yeah. like, she does her best to gesture to you, like, Simmerger and I will check that area out, like uh, out here to the west, and you go down here, right? That's kind of yeah, like okay, what she's so, trying yeah. to mime to you, to to what extent you catch onto that. Um, no, yeah, I think Paris is yeah. pretty smart, so he's able to kind of come up and he's gonna go check out mm-hmm. this area. As you head your way down, sloshing through the water, you will notice two things that do not require a perception check. One, the first one, is you hear noise, a noise coming down from this area uh, to the south. Um, the, so- the sound sounds like someone, like, in- like an injured, pained moan sound, like, ah, 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 kind of sound. Um, it's... It's kind of a bit disturbing hearing it. Someone might be down there. Uh, and the second thing that you'd notice is that there's a glint of light that catches your eye just beyond this corner. Um, that it like it catches somehow the what little sunlight uh, reflects in this area, um, um, revealing that there's something something catches your eye, something shiny down. <laughs> this area as well yeah so Varys I think Varys is going to snap reaction go after this like pained voice and you said it was coming from like this area yeah yeah the voice itself Um, okay and so I've also kind of like look to you and like wondering what you saw um yeah, you see, like, Varys kind of looks back to Sephiroth and just kind of, like, twitches his nose and his ears and then, <clears throat> like, scampers further down. Mm-hmm. Arsimagor, in the meantime, you're kind of taking point up there. Um, was there anything that you wanted to do up as you're looking over the, over, like, the, the pond, the, the pool? I mean, probably... Looking for any signs of habitation um, or given that it's a larger pool area, maybe even looking for um, not just habitation, but like th- assessing a threat level. If th- Does it look like something big lives in here that we need to worry about? Yeah, so the, the the sign of habitation that you'd see is this mollusk shell um, on the side of the this little extreme bank. Um, and make a perception roll for me, please. Uh, it was favoring uh, an 18 when it was jacked. It is a total of five. Nothing else catches your eye uh, up here. Um, Varys, however, I'm going to need you to make a perception roll, please, as you make your way down this place. Uh, 
it's a 19. You, thank goodness you stopped where you did, because you see in your dark vision, there is a tripwire right in front of you, right here. Oh. There is, you see it, it's strung underneath a small rock. It's like twisted up, uh, up the cave wall. And you look up and you can see that hidden, it almost like camouflaged into the ceiling. There's like a net up there. That's like, looks to be like barbed with small little jagged bits of sky metal that have uh, rusted a little bit. Yeah, Varys is going to let out like a, a sigh of relief, maybe wipe some sweat off of his fur um, as he takes a big step over the tripwire. Mm -hmm. You do so, and you'll see that uh, along this wall here, um, there has been like embedded uh, particularly shiny bits of sky metal that has been kind of like twisted and, and, and glued in whatever fashion onto this section of the cave wall. Um, and it's reflecting something uh, uh, around the corner that you can't see. That's you can scary. see it now, it's like, oh, very intentional uh, way to catch your eye. Yeah, very carefully, Varys is going to, very sneakily is going to look peek mm -hmm. in this. Yeah, and you'll see around the corner uh, in this section of the cave, um, there's like a skull that's been propped up and like a uh, like a human skull been propped up like on a stick and like a bit of like scrap, as well as like a forearm and a hand that's kind of been like shoved into a gauntlet. And it's holding up a um, a small little uh, sky metal device that like occasionally blinks out like uh, yellow and blue light, which is the light that was catching your eye. Um, definitely whatever, definitely looked like this was set up uh, in a way to uh, be bait. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, other than that, there's nothing... Um, oh, and uh, while you're here, the concentration of the of like the moaning sound seems to be coming from all around you. Uh, and you'll notice that embedded in the cave walls themselves are these like shells and bones that have been hollowed out in such a way so that when the wind catches them, uh, they make like sounds uh, that mimic uh, a person crying out or moaning in pain, uh, similar to the Aztec death whistle in, uh, in, in concept in real life. Mm. So yeah, Varys is getting a real bad feeling. So he's going to start kind of heading back towards uh, Zevroth. You make care to step over the the snare, and I'll I'll reveal the the trap to you, so that everyone can see it. So he's gonna go back to Zevroth, and he's yeah. just like, and she'll whisper to you, "What did you see?" Well, there was quite a bit of uh, lights and and moaning, and it's almost as if someone was calling for help. But when I went over there, there were, uh, well, there were quite a few traps. I didn't uh, trigger any of them. Uh, because of my death, um, but um, it looks like someone does not want us to be here. Perhaps there have been other people trying to get into this area before, hence the need for traps. Perhaps these chokers are craftier than we think. They must be cautious. Um, perhaps we'll best avoid those places. Did you see anything else down there, or is that just... Is that it? Did it go any place? Is that the entrance to their lair? Uh, it did go off a little bit, but I wanted to come back first to just let you know that I'm that I'm okay and alive, and that there are traps. And Sevrath looks to you or Samagor, if you wanted to say or do anything. Um, she's kind of taking note that you've been kind of like peering over the the edge of the waterfall and kind of like looking around. Um, she, you can tell, you realize, actually, that she has a harder time seeing in the dark than the both of you um, in this place. And so her vision is very much limited uh, compared to the two of you. <clears throat> I will... Uh, 
indicate with um I, I think I, I probably start out indicating with hand signals and then realize, oh, she probably can't really see what I'm doing and I'll move in close and whisper. It's a path around the lake. Or this body of water. It looks like it may continue on the other side. Definitely better than those tight passageways. The stream. It must have a source. Follow it. You hear a big sigh from your Simigor <clears throat> as he glances over his shoulder. I glance over my shoulder in the direction of the wide open path. And yeah. so, yeah, she's gesturing to like the, the, yeah. the or and she's referring to this. Yeah. Right. I look over my shoulder at the wide open path and realize mm -hmm. we're not going to stay in the wide open. I sigh and gesture to Varys. Well, lead the way. So yeah, and you're able to take this path, if you will, to catch up to this river and go from here um, pretty easily, if you wish. I'll follow where Varys is, and we're going to move through the tunnels. Might as well get it over with. Yeah, Varys is going to lead the way, making sure to give both Zevroth and your Simigor plenty of lead time. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe a little too much that there's a... Uh... A trap here. So Severoth is like squeezing. She's moving through difficult terrain. She's like trying to like bump past all this place. Mm -hmm. Um well, and she she points to this whoops. part of the river. I did not mean to do that. Like this way. She gestures. Uh yeah, Varus nods. So she begins to go ahead this way. Um and she'll step onto the land. Um, as you're able to point out that the, the river continues this way. Um, and she stops um, and glances uh, down. She's like trying to like see what uh, what's down there, but she can't really uh, in her with her eyes. Um, And she whispers, it continues this way. It's flowing downhill. It's The source must be up here this way. Um, as what she says is true, the water is flowing down the sneaking way um, up into the pool. Yeah, Varys is going to uh, go ahead. He's like keeping a really sharp eye out for, for anything on like these stone pillars or any kind mm -hmm. of unnatural markings. Yeah, you'll see... Um, pretty easily that there is another one of those mollusk shells right here. Um, kind of just like haphazardly shown to the side um, against this cave wall. Um, but otherwise nothing stands out in particular note. You do see that there was like an entrance to another cave section down here that seemed to have opened up quite a bit. Um, and it seems that it maybe stretches this entire way. There's an entrance here and an entrance here. Yeah, so then Varys is going to kind of gesture to this area and say with that, uh, maybe we should check this area out first. And is this river, like, it's not deep, right? No, no, not deep at all. It, it's difficult terrain, but that's it. It's like, for the for the medium-sized folks, it's like ankle, a little bit above ankle height. Um, okay. For you, Varys, it's like shin height. Okay, so then Varys is going to cross and kind of go along the opposite bank then. Yeah. Sevrath will join you as Simrgor. And Varys, you'll see, uh, as well as you as Simrgor, there's another mollusk shell right here. Uh, again, kind of just like discarded to the side. Do they all have like the same hole? Uh, these two, you don't see a hole in them, though. No. Oh, what? Are they getting bigger? The shells? No. Yeah. Okay. 
important question. So yeah, Varys is going to go look around this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and pa I'll pause Varys right there. I needed to make a perception roll as uh, as you cr around this corner. Oh, not one. Perfect. As you round this corner, you are stupefied, mesmerized, like in awe of what you see along this far wall. Upon like the parts of this far wall that you can see uh, on either side of this pillar in the way, um, there is this great mural stretching in what seems to be like red paint um, all along this far wall. Um, you're not really sure what kind of like symbols and stuff are in this in this mural um other than like you get the sense that it's something painted and important and i think like you trying to get a peek at what it is makes you completely unsuspecting of what happens next or simagor you see it after it happens or as it happens but one of these chokers drops from the ceiling directly on top of you Varys, um grabbing you in it it's like it's a grip um around your mouth and face specifically trying to suffocate you so it's going to make an attack roll against you with advantage as it drops out of hiding against you and that's going to be a 23 to hit you oh yeah you feel that there are barbs um that poke out from the limbs uh, of these creatures as you're going to take six points of slashing damage as well uh, as you are grappled and restrained and you cannot breathe or speak until this grapple ends. And with that, please, all of you roll initiative. By all of you, I mean both of you. <laughs> all two of us roll initiative. You rolled a one on initiative as well? Oh my lord. No way. I'm struggling. Oh my gosh. My the pattern on these dice for a second, I thought I rolled a one, but... <laughs> I rolled a 12, which I believe... Uh, where's my... Um, I have a 15 for initiative. A 15. Perfect. Okay, so... Um, as Sevroth uh, is startled by one of these chokers coming down and grappling, surprising Varys, uh, she's going to be caught off guard um, by another one of these creatures... Uh, ambulating from the ceiling again, uh, moving up and attacking her from hidden, uh, attacking her with advantage, uh, getting a critical hit, um, which means that she will take, oh, wow, maximum damage, uh, 11 damage, uh, as she is also grappled, restrained, um, and cannot breathe nor speak. Uh, as that happens um, but it is her turn and she's going to use her action um, to try to break free of the grapple and try to grab this thing and rip it off uh, using using her, her, her sword hand um, she is able to not escape uh, from this grapple um, and she cannot move because she's restrained um, so now it's this guy's turn uh, this guy's going to move which means that Ursimagor you have a chance to make a perception uh, roll to try to beat it. Uh, it's a 14. All right, you uh, will spot it just in time before attack, so it is not attacking from advantage, as it lunges out and slashes at you um, with uh, its raking, raking long limbs. Uh, it's only going to get a 9 to hit you, uh, so it's not going to hit you. Um, and... The choke, uh, the one on Varus already did its turn because it did a surprise attack. So, Simagor, it is your turn. Um, despite the fact that there's one right near me, and I know I'm going to draw an opportunity attack, I'm actually going to charge over to Varus and attempt to rip this one off of him. All right. Perfect. The question. So. Mm -hmm. Um, stand by. We haven't disconnected, but I don't think we're streaming right now. Nope, we just disconnected. And we reconnected. 
course it happens right in the midst of combat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just need to be able to edit around this. Okay, I think we're back up. Okay. Mm -hmm. So despite the fact that I'm going to draw an opportunity to attack, I will charge at the one with Varus. The question I was going to ask is, is there enough of this thing that I can hit it without hurting Varus? Uh, absolutely, yes. Okay. You could just try to strike it yourself. Yeah. So that is going to be my tactic then. I have confidence in my ability. Um, also, I don't like being ambushed. So, of course, I'm going to rage. Uh, and I am going to take uh, Severoth's brother's sword the sword of Gorath and charge at this thing and I am going to make an attack recklessly uh, can wait can I, do, I can't do that at level 1 can I you cannot do that at level 1 no. I'm like wait a minute I gotta double check what I can do um Ironically, you would think as a young barbarian, recklessness would be something that comes naturally. Um, oh, what I could do... Oh, I guess I don't need to do that. Alright, I'm just going to attack. Um, okay, so it gets an opportunity to attack against you. Yep. Um, getting a 23 to hit, which That'll will hit. connect and deal you 7 slashing damage, which gets half down to 3. Oh, 3 damage and then the one on are you freaking kidding me uh i rolled a nat one. Oh no you did you want to spend some domain relics you know to what i think i have to spend three to re-roll we're at 11 yeah. so that'll put us uh -huh. at eight um let me do this real quick so i don't mess it up it's gonna go up and then this is gonna go to a Yes, I will re-roll that for Varus's sake. Oh my lord. It almost rolled onto a 1 again. And then it flipped over to the 19, making that attack a... A hit, 24. Sure. Yeah, that will be a hit. Um, so that's going to be... It's for Pathfinder, that's a crit. That's not. <laughs> that is going to be... Uh, three plus, um, sorry, uh, three plus three is six plus, uh, two for the rage. So eight. Eight total. Eight the, the choker that is grappling Varus, uh, takes a huge hit and it hisses, it like, it literally twists its head back a full 180 degrees since it has no bones in its body and like hisses at you, um, uh, in the language you don't understand it as him regard, but Varus, you'll hear it like get out of our home it says uh to your simagor <laughs> great these chokers are just standing their ground yeah uh that's your turn of simagor action movement bonus action yep all right um behind your simagor those mollusk shells begin to move of course they do and from them emerge one of these chokers purr uh, as they, they limber out of their shell and crawl towards you. This one's going to crawl towards you and lash out at you with a, a raking claw. Um, it's only going to get a uh, uh, an 8 to hit, so it's not going to hit you. Um, this one will not go to you. It'll go to Sevroth and take advantage of her. She's restrained, so it's going to attack with advantage. Um, with a claw getting another critical hit. Oh, this poor girl. Um, that's going to be... Oh my lord. That's a, oh, that's a, that was the wrong die size. Um, uh, 11 damage to her from a critical hit. Um, and Varys, it is your turn. You are restrained and you are suffocating. Um, this is around... What, what's your con mod? Uh, plus one. Okay, so you, this is round one of four before you pass out from 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 lack of breath. Yeah, uh, Bruce is gonna try and get out. If he can okay. wriggle his yes. way free. So that'll be an acrobatics check uh, to try to wriggle free of the of the of the grapple. Uh, 
Uh, 16. That is enough to break free, because you're able to gasp for air uh, and break free of the grapple. Uh, you are no longer grappled, so that is your action that you've used to break free. Uh, but you still have your act, or you're moving your bonus left. You see, I knew I could count on you, Yusumagor. He says, like, triumphantly, seeing that Yusumagor had tried to bonk this uh, choker. Uh, so uh, he's going to give uh, Yusumagor uh, bardic inspiration, which is a d6. And that is his turn. All right, for the top, um, this choker on top will maintain the grapple because um, it can't do anything when it's when it's suffocating her. Um, Sephiroth, instead of like trying to break it free, she's going to try and just stab at it, or not stab, bonk at it with her mace uh, to try to clobber it off um, as she suffocates. So she is going to roll an attack roll against it with disadvantage because she is restrained. Still hits um, and is able to deal damage. Um, that's going to be six damage to the choker. Um, and then she's going to burn a second win uh, to regain some hit points. That's going to be nine hit points she gets back on her second wind. No longer becoming bloodied from this. Uh, but she's still going to keep suffocating so that she's up to two out of five turns before she runs out of breath. Um, it is now the two chokers that are on a Simicor's turn. Uh, they're going to continue with the assaults against... Uh, one on one on Simicor, one on Varus will be how they attack. The one on uh, Ursimagor uh, will get a 21 to hit, dealing you a total of four slashing, which gets halved down to two. And Varus, one of them slashes at you, uh, getting a 21 to hit, and hitting you for six slashing damage, which does not get halved. Uh, Ursimagor, it is now your turn. You are surrounded by foes. Um, who are trying to defeat the intruders. Um. <clears throat> so these chokers, they're roughly Varus sized? They are slightly, slightly, very slightly smaller than Varus, especially because they can compact themselves down. Um, oh, okay. They're small size creatures. <clears throat> We've seen this move once before in the future. Um, I think this is going to be the first time. Uh, well, I'm going to attempt it. I would like to grab the choker that's that was on Varus and use it as an improvised weapon to hit the shelled choker that's next to me. Okay. I would like to attempt this is, that. Okay, hey, this is going to be a compete competed athletics roll between you and the choker. Fair. Uh, and if you succeed, then you'll be able to make an attack roll with it. All right, so let's let me find my d20. There we go. Um, so you get advantage because of your rage, yeah. Right. I'm glad. Uh, let's double what I rolled. So that's good. Uh, so with athletics, that's a total of 13. It got a 14. Oh, my word. Um, Wait, beating you wait, by one. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, 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 Bardic Inspiration. Plus one on the Bardic there die. There we go. <laughs> you, <laughs> you succeed at grabbing this choker. <clears throat> uh, it almost like instinctively just like grabs onto your arm uh, when you grab it um, to try to like, well, you're not going to whatever. Uh, but you're able to now use this other choker as an improvised weapon against the other one. Um, so what I'll do is I'll have you roll a d6 plus all your bonuses for damage. Um, okay. And I'll split the damage between the two creatures. D6 plus bonuses. All right, let me grab my D20. Okay. You know what? These physical dice have not been treating me very well. I'm going to roll the attack here. Straight up D20 roll. So, oh my word. Okay, so that's a D6 plus uh -huh. strength modifier. So that'd be a nine plus uh, rage bonus. Rage bonus would push it up to an 11. 
All right, cool. So we'll split the damage. Five that, on that, the one that's in your hand. That and actually six on hits. The other. Oh, uh, sorry. Oh, that's that, that was to hit. Tackle? I haven't even rolled good? damage. I was just rolling oh. to hit. Oh, 11 to hit. Uh, no, what the... Sorry, I thought this was damage. Um, okay, sorry. So that was your that was your d20 roll to see if you hit? That first? was to see if I hit with the improvised uh, choker. Oh, okay, yeah. So um, the, the shell the choker will retreat into its shell uh, to block the attack, um, which means that you will not do damage. So I thought you said you did 11 damage. My no, I wish. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was my D20 plus rage bonus plus strength uh, that only totaled right. 11. Do you want to so. use some domain relics for this? Um, Three more to reroll it? M M's uh, shaking. Yes. All right. We'll, 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 we'll try to make this happen one more time. I'm going to switch to a completely different D20 and roll out of the box. Yeah, that's a 10 on the die, plus thir 3 is 13, plus 2 is 15 to hit. That will be enough to hit. Uh, so now you can roll the d6 damage, plus that's all your bonuses. d6, plus, 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 plus 3 for strength, plus mm -hmm. 2 for rage, so that's a total of 9. Awesome. Uh, we'll divide that damage uh, 5 and 4, so that the one in your hand dies, and the one in the shell uh, takes the remainder for damage. Uh, as you splatter one choker onto the shell of the other one, uh, caving it in a bit, because these shells are a little bit weak. Uh, they're not, like, indestructible, um, like some creature shells are in the world. That and is it, your turn. Yeah, and I just imagine as a follow-up to that, kind of looking at Varus and just trying to shake these tentacles that are probably still clinging clinging mm -hmm. to my arm, trying to shake this thing off. But yeah, that's my turn. All right, perfect. Now it is the two shelled chokers' turns. Uh, one of them will attack you or Simagor. The other one is going to attack Sevroth. One on you or Simagor is going to lash out at you, getting a uh, uh, plus four, 16 to hit. Does that that's hit? My AC is 16. Right, that so will hit you. It and deal you seven slashing, which gets halved down to three slashing. And Severus can be attacked with advantage. Missing her. All right, somehow. Uh, her, her armor blocks the attack. Varys, it is your turn. All right, Varys, now free, um, is going to go around and is going to take this um, dust out of his bag and uh, he aims it at these chokers and is going to try and cast sleep. Ooh, okay. So that's going to roll a bunch of d8s and tell me what you get. 5d8. Uh, 15. So that that will knock out this choker. We'll, the dust will flow, and this one choker will become like a, just a limp, like like a limp mollusk uh, on the ground. Cool. Uh, completely, completely asleep until it becomes damaged, or someone uses an action to wake it up. I believe, right? <laughs> All right. Um, anything else? You, anything else on your on your turn? No, he moved. Uh, that was his turn. Yep. Okay. Um, this choker will continue the the, the hold. Sevroth will again try to bash it off of her uh, with a mace to try to deal damage. Gets a miss uh, because of the restrained grab that she has on her. Um, that ticks up her suffocation meter. So three out of five. She is almost going to pass out from lack of air. Um, that choker is asleep. So Simrigor, it is your turn. One of the chokers that was like kind of slashing at you with these like barbed things on its hands just passes out unconscious uh, from Varus's spell. Uh, what do you want to do as you have this dead choker kind of still attached to your arm, the same way like an octopus would be, um, and your your sword in you, know, you still have your sword available. What do you want to do? 
Um, the since it's dead, will you allow that I serve as flavor? Use the blade of my greatsword to slice off the limbs to get this dead weight off my arm. Just yeah, that's that's it's a free action for you. So shroom, and then probably with the vest vestiges of the tentacle still clinging to my arm, I'm going to turn my sword on the shelled choker. Um, that will be. That's going to be a total of 11 to hit. 11 is not enough. It'll glance off of the shell on this thing's back that it uses like it almost like pushes its shell into the way of your blade to make sure that it doesn't hit any of its soft tissue um, as you make an ineffective attack against it. That's my turn. I don't. All right. Yeah. Then. The shelled choker will take you at when you're a little bit off guard from the swing and retaliate against you uh, with another slash, getting a 12 to hit against you. That's going to miss. All right, perfect. So that will be a miss from it. And then Sevroth again gets attacked um, by the raking claws, gets another hit against her, which is going to deal her six damage. She goes to 13 hit points. Varys, it is your turn. Oh boy, okay. Um, how is your Simagor looking? Hale and hearty. Cool. And as far as works go, pretty dashing. <laughs> A solid seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely twice your size, yeah. Um so Varys is going to look to this this choker. Mm -hmm. He's going to stutter for a second and he... You do know that you're working for an objectively horrible person and so this is why we're doing this to you. Um, I don't know how you can live with yourself with, you know, such a poor decision-making skills, he says, as he's going to cast Vicious Mockery. He gets a three on the Wisdom Saving Throw. Oh, this really cut him. Yeah. Uh, he takes two points of damage. Of psychic damage. Yeah. Cool. Regret and uh, guilt uh, wash over this small creature, <laughs> realizing the people I've eaten, the deeds I've done, all in the name of evil, you say, um, as a little bit of morality washes over it, just for a brief moment before it passes. Uh, this rat, this small rat is disappointed in me. <laughs> um, so and then I'm going to give uh, Yusimagor another bardic inspiration. Sweet. You are inspired by the bard. All right. This choker maintains the cold. Sevroth again tries to. Oh, she's she's running out of air. She's got she's gonna try and break drain out. Um. She's she's feeling it. She's not able to break free, uh, of the of the restraints. Um, missing missing the DC by one, unfortunately. Um. So that means she's, seen, she's now four out of five for supplication. Which means next turn, unless she gets out of the grapple, she will pass out. Um, that's the choker number one is still asleep. Um, or Simagor, it's your turn. Uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Or I guess an observation. Um... Oh, never mind. Never mind. Sorry. You don't have to damage me. You just have to attack. I didn't get hit, nor did I hit, so I was worried that my rage might end, but you just have no. to make an attack. You just have to attack. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going after this thing again. The shelled choker. That's better. That's 21 to hit. 21? Correct. This thing tries to duck into its shell um, to get an AC of 
uh, of 17 to try to block it. Uh, so it tucks into its shell, prone, uh, in front of you, uh, but you're able to cleave into the shell nonetheless um, to deal damage. That's a total of 15 points of Holy slashing damage. Crap. Um, so that brings it down to well beyond bloodied uh, and the creature remains in the shell despite I think you just like probably skewered through yeah. the shell through a few vital organs that this thing has that's my turn All right. that is okay now the the shell choker that's attacking Sevroth will continue to do so seeing that she is near death uh, uh, missing her somehow, her uh, the the choker can't get past her armor, um, and the one that's in the shell in front of you um, will try to like scuffle across the ground inside the shell, um, using the well, it cannot use the disengage action inside the shell, uh, so it'll try to scuttle away from you, uh, provoking an attack attack of opportunity against you. Where is actions? It's freaking eleven. Won't leave me alone. Uh, I fail on an opportunity attack. Okay, it glances off the shell, um, and so it'll move its full movement, like across the ground, uh, trying to escape uh, from the spite. That was that one. Varus, it's your turn. Can Varys get over to Severoth to try and help her without invoking opportunity? Okay, so that's seven. You would be able to get to her, but you would provoke it. Oh, no, because the choker's asleep. Yeah, you can get to her. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So he's going to go there, and he's just going to try and, like, use the help action, essentially, to help uh, Severoth. Okay. Um, do you want to try to get her out? I think it's better if he just gives her advantage. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we will yeah. we will say that she has advantage. Yeah. Um, on it. Okay. Um, that brings us to her turn. She's going to use your advantage to try to break free because uh, she is gasping for air. She gets enough to break free. She rips uh, the choker, slamming it to the ground. Uh, no longer suffocating, gasping for air. That is her action. Uh, she just raises her shield, twists her mace in her hand, and gets ready for some pummeling. Um, or Simigor, it is your turn. I will. I'm gonna. I'm gonna rush the shell Joker then. That's uh, been attacking Severoth. And whoops. I'm going, yeah, I'm going to rush this thing and smack it with my sword. That's a, an 18 to hit. 18 hits. So that'll be, uh, 12 plus two for raging. So 14. 14. This bloodies the, the shell chokers. You smash part of its shell and probably I imagine like, cut off one of its um, redundant arms um, all just like whole handedly uh, and with this blow and that's my turn um, that's your turn it will retaliate against you striking out at you or um, no it's going to still go after Zebra because um, she's almost dead um, no longer advantage because no longer restrained gets a hit Deals the full repertoire of damage. Four points of damage to her. Uh -huh. And uh, Simagora and Varys, you'd see out of the corner of your eye, the mollusk shell continuing to scuttle um, away down uh, this river and out of sight. Um, Varys, it's your turn. Is Sephiroth, how is Sephiroth looking? Oh, not she so is, great health 
She's bloodied, but alive and fully capable. She's no longer restrained or anything. She's got her shield and mace out. She's, she's looking damaged, but definitely still able to keep keep the fight on. She's a she's a very seasoned warrior, you can tell. Yeah, he's still gonna cast uh, cure wounds on her. <laughs> okay. He's gonna be like, I I made this new um, concoction um, from this recipe that I that I read. As he like puts this salve on her and heals her eleven hit points. Oh hell yeah. She goes back up to 20 hit points. No longer bloodied by your healing magic. Um, we go to the top of an issue. Uh, oh, you still have a movement left, and you can move wherever you want. You're not being threatened by anyone. Yeah, he's just going to stay there. Okay, stays there. Perfect. Um, the awake choker is going to try to continue to slash at her, um, trying to bring her down, but... Things are looking a bit grim because uh, the choker misses. Um, Sevros's turn. She's going to retaliate with an attack. Um, there is no one within five feet of it. I guess you count. Just in the corner. Oh no! Yeah, sorry. You're not. You're you have to be adjacent. Never mind. Um, so you don't quite count. So she's going to attack. Uh, she gets a thirteen, which. Misses, uh, bounces, uh, the, th the thing dodges away uh, from the attack. So she's going to try again, making a second attack. Also another miss. Uh, she strikes out with two mace strikes um, and is unable to land a blow. Uh, Simregor, it's your turn. I'm going to finish this shelled uh, choker um, or attempt to finish it off with... Gorath, Gorath's blade. Uh, that will be a fourteen to hit. Uh, a fourteen would normally hit, but this thing ducks into its shell just in the nick of time as a reaction, granting it an AC of seventeen. I have a bardic inspiration uh, die. I can't ooh, use it on attack. You can use that as a reaction. Yeah, you, yeah, you oh, can, can you use, use it, it now too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Ah, not this time. Uh, that's a two makes it a 16. All right. The creature is now prone and in its shell and blocks the attack against uh, that you that you dealt to it. Which brings us then to its turn, where it's going to use its bonus action to pop right back out of the shell uh, and strike out at you for Simagor. Uh, yeah, Simagor. Um, you're, you're the more threatening. It attacks you, lashing out with its good hand. Doesn't hit, getting a seven to hit. Um, Varus, it's your turn. Um, okay, Varus is gonna go around to this other choker. He's gonna try and cast Vicious Mockery on it again. Okay, or, perfect. For the first time. Again, for the first time, um, yeah. 11, 11 on the save. Uh, nice. Sorry, 12. Yeah. 12 on the save, sorry. That's that still is still a fail. <laughs> Takes one point of psychic damage. Cool. Is there any other rider on the Vicious Mockery that it has? It's like any other effect on it? Oh, it has disadvantage on the next attack roll it makes. Oh, OK. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you moved. You attacked. Uh, you have a bonus action left. Yeah, that's it. Okay. It is now the Choker's turn. And seeing that you are way more up its up its style uh, in terms of like size of prey, uh, the Choker's going to attack you, Varus, at a disadvantage because of the Vicious Mockery. Um, getting a three plus, a three plus five, an eight total to hit you from your Vicious Mockery, which will miss you. Um, Cyroth is going to make some attacks against it. She has advantage now because of her. Thank you, Varys. Um, getting a connecting blow against the Choker, which deals not enough damage to kill it. And then she hit a second time. She does not. Okay, she does five points of damage, reducing it down to one hit point. Um, that Choker's asleep. Or Simagor, your turn. 
We're going to try this again. This time I'm going to roll a physical die. Oh, um, that is a total of... Where's my box? Come on. That is a 13 to hit. That will be a miss, unless you'd like to... Oh, no, you're, you're using your bardic inspiration. Yep, I use my bardic die. Do you want to use domain relic? No, I've burned through six of those things already. Okay. Um, I imagine with this thing kind of prone in its shell, I'm just wildly in a rage swinging at it. There's probably sparks mm -hmm. flying from the blade. Uh striking the stones as I'm just failing to hit this thing properly. Yeah, the, seeing that the shell is doing a good job at glancing your blows, the shell choker is going to attack Sevroth again uh, with a swipe, getting a 13 to hit, which hits her. Um, it's going to deal her ooh, 7 damage. Yikers. A solid attack against her, which bloodies her once more, uh, cutting open with this big long raking slash Varys it is your turn okay um oh one point okay another vicious mockery another we got vicious a, mockery we gotta, yeah that's gonna be a 12 again which means it'll take enough psychic damage to drop to zero hit points from your Go vicious ahead. mockery as the guilt overcomes it and your psychic damage defeats the foe. Did you just insult that thing to death? <laughs> Varys looks very proud of himself. He's like, I can't believe that worked. You That's get, never worked before. You get the equivalent of the of the gif of the bearded dude going <laughs> as as uh, your Simagor just kind of kind of nods with appreciation. Hmm. Sevroth will take this moment to turn attacking the shelled choker creature. Uh, she's Her first hit will cause the choker to use its reaction to go into its shell. Um, and the second attack will deal damage despite the shell, uh, clubbing into it with a, a massive heavy mace strike, dealing it Eight points of damage, which defeats it to zero to kill it. At this point, we are out of initiative because the last remaining choker is asleep. Sevroth, boom, she pants, still catching her breath from the suffocation. She looks at the both of you and at the asleep, uh, enchantedly asleep choker on the ground. That was a close one. Both of you okay? looking at the wounds that you both share. I... I'm fine. Uh, yes, uh, just a bit of a scratch here and there, but... Uh, no, uh, feeling great. She gestures to the, to the sleep one. That one's up for the camp too, yeah? We can keep going? And Sephiroth will begin to make her way um, along the bank of the river. Um, Varys, you saw the mural down on the lower cavern. Did you want to... Is that on your mind, or you wanted to press forward? Um, I think I would like to press forward. Okay. As you do so, uh, I guess in Simrigor, you do you press forward as well? I don't yeah. know if Varys um, pointed out anything about the cavern to the south. Mm -hmm. As you press forward, all of you hear a sound coming from behind, um, a, back near where the entrance is. It's like grating, this like smashing sound. And as you turn to look to see what's going on, um, you'll see a very familiar sight uh, here. Uh, I guess you can't see it because it's out of your vision. Um, a voice 
calls out from over here. Stop at once. Uh, and you'll be able to see Rasimagor, your own sister. Attached to her arm is Grick, who's kind of like hanging on, um, dangling. You'll see that there is uh, a Hellionite orc at her side, um, a large gargoyle, which the future Varus and future Ursimagor will recognize down below the earth, below Torch, who is like shaking off its claws. It just, it, it the gargoyle literally like had burrowed through, expanding uh, the cave uh, wall um, where they went through. And I think with this little bit of a standoff, as a look washes over Kolgara's face, recognizing her brother at the other side of this, of this cavern. And you have a look back on her. That is where we're going to end tonight's session. It's the closest I can get to the, <laughs> the whistle from the good, the bad, and the ugly. Also, uh, outwardly, your Simigor is bristling inwardly. Uh, your Simigor is looking at the other two and back at this group and going, we're aft. We're aft in the B and it's, we're going to die. Um, awesome. Um, that was, uh, <laughs> that was now what is, uh, in it, part one of the interlude or just interlude mm -hmm. one. Uh, I told you that the, the implication was that there would be another interlude. So, um, you'll have to stay tuned, uh, for when that next interlude will happen. Um, but rest assured, uh, we'll, we'll be sure to continue this, this, uh, flashback. Because even though we know they get out of this somehow, even I'm wondering just how are we going to get through this? Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you to everybody who tuned in tonight. Thank you to the Architects of Fate for the raid. Um, uh, a couple new follows. And uh, looks like Tomiko gifted by a subscription. So thank you. That was one of one of the six domain uh, relics that I used. Um, so yeah, thank you for that. Uh, thank you to everybody hanging out in the chat. Um, we always appreciate that. Or if you're somebody lurking uh, quietly in the background or watching later in the VODs, we appreciate you as well. Um, be sure to tune in. I forgot to plug this at the beginning because I was I was rushing through announcements, but. Uh, be sure to join us on Thursdays um, for our Welcome to Paradise Academy Season 2 of our Paradise, Michigan Kids on Bikes campaign. Um, and uh, stay tuned in the coming week. Uh, uh, in fact, this game, which happens every other Tuesday, starting next week, uh, we are expecting to start anyway, um, on Opposite Tuesdays will be a brand new campaign uh scavenger i believe we ca are calling it death at dusk um and that will be gm'd by one of the creators of scavenger marquise um and will feature the yarl dm lloyd and myself sorry the yarl dm and lloyd that's all one person uh, <laughs> the yarl dm slash lloyd uh and myself um will uh be the players in that game um and then uh this just in in two weeks there will not be a sky metal um sounds like a great place to possibly slide in a part two of the um of this meaning we have to get together and make that happen before then um but yeah, and then uh, we recently wrapped the 103rd regular episode of Souls. That was the penultimate episode 
we will be excuse me we will be looking to record a finale very soon and that will be airing soon uh followed by within within a few weeks of that a brand new campaign um i still don't have a, a firm title on it yet but it's basically the seven dooms for sandpoint adventure path from pathfinder 2e uh so with that i would like to say a final thank you to vi and m uh also to uh karen and sarah though they weren't with us tonight they were with us in spirit um but thank you, uh, Vi and M, uh, that we put together this this special and the first Sky Metal interlude. Uh, without whom, this would have just been Vi talking to herself for a couple hours. Uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and end this stream the same way we end every stream. And you can say it with me if you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.